Hi, let's try to do some practice question on standing wave. So this question said there's a standing wave on a string with both and fixed. This is very important information because you know uh, if it is other cases, the result may be different. And so it's very important to notice this. It said the frequency for first harmonic, so I'll put on F1, will be this one, and calculate the length of the string. So I think no matter what kind of standing wave question you are trying to calculate, you should draw the diagram first, and that will be very useful. So think about this, for both fixed end, then the diagram for the first harmonic will be like the one that we draw initially last time. And so now it's asking you the length. So length should equal to half of the lambda. And so this is a key where you help, it helps you to calculate further. Now we can use the wave equation v equals to f lambda to solve. We have got the v from the question which is 240 for the string, speed of wave in the string, frequency to be 150 simply, and we can find the wavelength to be 240 divided 150, which is 1.6 meter by checking the unit, and therefore the string is going to be 1.6 divided by 2, which is 0 0.8 meter. That's the answer for part A. Part B is asking you the wavelength of the sound that is produced. Be careful, the wavelength of the string doesn't mean the wavelength of the sound. However, the frequency is going to be the same. So it's the same idea as I always say, uh, for example, the vocal cord vibration would be vibrating at a certain frequency and that's the same frequency of the sound wave because this is how frequent it is vibrating the air and that's how you are hearing my voice right now. So if you can accept this, then we can get hold with this relationship that is the frequency in string is the frequency in the air uh, or the sound itself. And then you can use the wave equation which is uh, by rearranging it, that's going to be V over lambda for each of them, string, string, air, air. And so after substituting all these things, you'll be able to find the answer to be 2.26666 recurrent. And so I run up to 3 sig fix, so 2.27 meter. Next question, it said there is a pipe with one open and one closed end. So that's the case number three, if you can refer back to your booklet. And it asks you to determine the ratio of frequency of the first harmonic to the next harmonic. Um, so what next harmonic means actually here is if you recall, this is a case where you only have the odd number of harmonic. And therefore it is now F1 and the next one is F free directly and so if you can remember the relationship of this you don't even need to calculate anything because the next frequency which is a third harmonic is going to be three times of the first one and that is simply the ratio you have so three is the answer of course if you don't remember this you can always draw the diagram and deduce it again and therefore uh, you will still reach the same result as we did in the previous video. For the next question, I would like you to try it yourself because you should know how to do it. So again, first draw the diagram and try to calculate the things that the question asks. Pause the video now and try it yourself. A few moments later. Let's read the question first. So it tells us the frequency. Uh, one side is open, the other side is closed. So one open, one closed case. Uh, there are some powder sprinkle end and uh, we can observe that the powder will collect in hips that means that they will just gather together at the displacement of 8 cm apart so you may be wondering why you are not given the length of the tube or the number of the harmonic because this doesn't really matter so think about this if we try to draw the diagram for an arbitrary harmonic um, it will still work because this is going to be a note, this is going to be anti-note, and maybe there is also another note here. And so the wave that you get is probably something like this. Oops, not at the top, actually, it should be like this. Okay. 
And if you like to add more harmonic, that's also fine too. And so if you try to understand the idea of the XCM apart for the hips, and so hips actually is like, like I said, where the pounder will gather, and therefore that must be the note not anti note because anti note would, would have a large amplitude and they are they are all gone basically so only note is where it doesn't vibrate so think about the string in that case that particular part of the particle doesn't actually move at all so this is the same idea where the powder would get collected at that particular position and therefore that means between the consecutive note is going to be 8 cm apart if you redraw the diagram, it will all be the same, just like this one. And so again, between the two consecutive notes, it is 8.0 cm. So at the end, uh, it doesn't matter what harmonic it is in, uh, as long as you know this as an information. So for part A, maybe we can do this first. Explain this observation, meaning that for the hips, you can, uh, you can write the whole sentence, but basically what it means is uh, this is the position of the note and here we've got a standing wave. Well, I guess the question didn't say so, and so I guess you need to specify. Now you have got an, a standing or stationary wave. Yeah, they are the same, same term. So stationary wave is form and those hips will be the position of the note where the powder will be gathered together. Part B then is just about calculation and from the diagram that we draw, that's why I said drawing the diagram is very important. This is going to be half lambda, right? You can check it yourself, half lambda. And that means half lambda equal to 8 cm. Therefore, 1 lambda is going to be 16 cm, which equal to 0 0.16 meter, turning it into SI unit. And lastly, then we can do this. V equals to F lambda, and then V would equal to uh, the frequency 2100 and 0 0.16. And therefore, you can find the velocity, which it's very sensible to be 336 meter per second, right? Very close to what we have normally.